Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK. Welcome if it's the first time you're visiting my site. Thank you to all of my subscribers. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Share where necessary. And like if you think what I'm saying is useful or helpful. Uh, today I decided, I don't even know how I came across this bit of information. But it's the new immigration rules came out in March 2017, um, which is a couple of months ago, um, but I haven't mentioned it and therefore I don't know if you know about it. So um, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm going to go through um, new rules and regulations with some different um, of all different topics after this one, not in this video, but afterwards. But this one, I wanted to focus on this one because I found it quite, um, I won't say amusing, but I'll just talk about it. I've got that bloody smirk again. So you know I'm up to no good. Um, yeah, but basically, I'm going to read it out. The Home Office, um, this is to do with, you know, their new immigration legislations that came into effect on the 7th of March. Um, the rules will provide skilled business people with access to two new visa routes to be set up to set up businesses in the UK. Um, the aim is to attract leading talent and crack down on abuse. Um, but I'm not going to go into all of that because there was one thing in here that I found pretty interesting. Um, so I'm going to start off with this part. The Home Office will also extend the salary exemption on the Tier 2 General Visa so that the NHS and schools can continue to attract and hire experienced teachers, nurses and paramedics from overseas. The salary exemption applies to all nurses and paramedics and medical radiographers and secondary school teachers whose subjects are in maths, physics, chemistry, computer science, and Mandarin. So it looks like, you know, they had that 30,000 threshold. It's not going to apply to people in this field in order to get them to come to the country because they know it's practically impossible for them to come in based on that rate. Okay, a two-year scheme which will allow up to 20 nurses from Jamaica to come to the UK to gain vital experience in NHS hospitals as a part of the exchange scheme was also announced. Now, because this is um, came into effect on the 7th of March, even though I've just picked it up, I've got a funny feeling that this has been superseded by yesterday's news with regard to the 75,000 nurses that they are scrapping. Maybe wrong, but I think it may have been. But this is what I found interesting. The government has already supported, already, you know, already supported and relocated over 1,000 brave Afghan interpreters and their families so they can rebuild their lives in the UK. Now, what do you think about that? Interpreters, Afghan interpreters. Afghan people speak Pashto and Dari. There's supposed to be 7,600 Afghans in the UK. Now, why, I'm confused, why would they support and relocate 1,000 Afghan interpreters. Why are they calling them brave? You're going to have to put something in the comment here because I am totally confused. Because on the one hand, they're talking about their reducing immigration. It's not saying that these people are refugees or that they're escaping from some kind of um, war zone or being ill-treated. It's calling them brave Afghan interpreters. Now, I don't know if they need them to interpret um, the law for people, you know, in a criminal situation, if, or interpret people who are in hospital. I, I, I just don't get it. And, you know, not only the thousand brave Afghan interpreters, but also their families. 
They're not even doing that with the those waiting for limited leave, I mean, waiting for indefinite leave to remain. They're not even allowing their families to come over. Or even if they do, they're having to fork out a lot of money, not unless these people, these thousand brave Afghan interpreters, are going to be paying the, I certainly hope they're going to be paying the, um, visa fees of over a thousand pounds or whatever they are and three thousand six hundred whatever it is for their families i certainly hope that's the case but these people are already in the country and then it continues however in recognition of their support for the uk armed forces the Home Office is bringing forward rule changes so that eligible partners and children of interpreters still in Afghanistan can relocate, can relocate to the UK at the later date. So, are they saying that these Afghan interpreters are going into the army? Uh, what are they interpreting? It's not clear. You've got to help me on this one. I am totally confused why they would want to, why they bought in a thousand Afghans, people from Afghanistan. They're also prepared to bring eligible partners and children. Look how many that's going to amount to. Commenting on the changes, Immigration Minister Caroline Noakes, she's the one that's got rid of all the... Um, the foreign, well, putting a stop to all the foreign nationals or whether they're legal or illegal. She's got something to do with the um, hostility environment and all that stuff. I don't understand why she's endorsing it. She says, my priority is making sure that talented business people continue to see the UK as an attractive destination to develop their businesses. This will help create more jobs across the country and ensure our economy continues to thrive. So they must be bringing in money. They have to be. They have to. There has to be. They ha you know, the Britain ain't going to be doing that for nothing. They have to be bringing in money. So maybe, ah, I think I've got it. Maybe the, this thousand Afghan interpreters are, might be coming in on the tier one specialist visa where they actually bring money into the country, you know, because they're specialists. It has to be. That's the only way I can see that being valid especially if it's supported by this statement. So maybe that's where it comes in. Still a bit iffy, though. You know, on the one hand, you're talking about reducing immigration. On the other hand, you're doing something like that. So I, who am I? Who am I to judge? In addition to welcoming those who wish to contribute to our economy, we also recognise our duty to support the vulnerable. That is why I am proud that we are extending our commitment to the brave, brave Afghan interpreters and their families so that they can rebuild their lives here together in safety. However, what we will not tolerate is those who seek to abuse our system. And that is why I am bringing forward new measures which will make sure that only genuine investors who intend to support UK businesses can benefit from our immigration system. So yeah, they have to be investors. Have to be. So okay. I didn't know, I didn't make that connection before. So, 76,000 Afghans in the UK as at 2015. Other changes to, to the rules include the list of countries which benefit from streamlined documentary requirements. You can go to www.gov.uk for that. Um, it's been updated to include Brazil, Kazakhstan, Mauritius, Oman, Peru and Tunisia. This change will not only benefit students who will uh, be able to apply for visas through 
a more streamlined process. Money, money, money. Ain't it funny? That's what that's about, money. These people are something else. So when it suits them, it's okay to bring in the immigrants. When it suits them, when the immigrants are bringing in the dosh, it's okay, we let them in. And then after you let them in, you chastise them and treat them like crap. And talk about there's too many of them here. Don't let them in. Don't take their money and let them in so that you can make money on your bloody universities and goodness knows what. And then they have the audacity to chastise them and make them, make them look like they're the scum of the earth. It's one or the other. Either you don't want them, you don't want them. Don't bring them in. But don't bring them in and take their money and then treat them like crap. Oh! Because that is that is what this is all about. It's all about money. How you can use foreigners to better your ends. They are also, we are also increasing the initial period of leave granted to those who qualify for stateless leave from 30 months to five years. So, you know, people who, I don't know if this applies to those people who are stateless now, you know, those who didn't get registered in the country because their parents um didn't register them and technically they're not stateless now but they could be stateless in the future but these are people who don't have any nationality anywhere so they come here they could have come here on a boat they could have come here you know as a refugee but they can't go back to their country the country won't accept them as um, national nationals of their country so they become stateless so what they're saying is they're allowed to stay in the country for up to five years it used to be 30 months Um, and there's a little thing I highlighted in yellow for some reason or another. Leave to remain as a stateless person in the UK, April the 9th, 2019. That's when it came into effect or was posted. A stateless person as defined by the 1954 convention relating to the status of stateless persons is the person who is not considered a national by any state under the operation of its law. And they're doing this apparently to make it easier for those who are genuinely stateless and not able to live in any other country. And in this way, it will cut unnecessary bureaucracy. It's also to deter those who seek to abuse the system to benefit from stateless leave. Changes are being made to the rules to make sure that only those who are genuinely entitled to stateless leave can qualify. This makes clear that an individual is required to show that they have tried to obtain nationality or a right of residence in another country that they could reasonably expect to be entitled to before benefiting from stateless leave in the UK. The government is clear that we will not tolerate those who seek to play the system to remain in the UK. And not a pretty system, is it? The government remains committed to bringing net migration down to sustainable levels, but also recognises the need to attract people who bring benefits to the UK and enable employers to have access to the skills they need. Yep, yeah, OK. So what they're really saying is that they want to bring down net migration. But if they can make some money, by bringing in some foreigners, they're going to do that too. So I don't know how it works, really. I guess the way they'll make that work is if they get rid of all the illegal immigrants, that'll make room for all of these rich immigrants that are going to help make the economy thrive. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.